Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In this video, we're going to start looking at resistors connected in parallel with each other. So this is a different way of connecting resistors to what we've looked at in previous videos regarding resistors in series. We're going to consider, first of all, what happens when you connect resistors that have the same value as each other in parallel. So what happens when we've got the same value resistors? So we'll look at what happens when we connect two resistors in parallel with each other, then three resistors in parallel with each other. Again, we want to think about some practical application for this. So connecting loads or resistors in parallel with each other is how the vast amount of circuits uh, are installed. So in the real world, most loads are connected in parallel with each other for reasons that we'll discuss in another video. But again, we've got our electronics board set up, ready to go. We've got our multimeter that we're gonna to use to measure resistance. So we'll get that set up and then we'll build some circuits. So here we've got our multimeter. Uh, on this multimeter today, we're going to use it to measure resistance. Now you remember from our SR units video that resistance is measured in ohms. So we need to turn this to the ohms setting. So on the multimeter, if you look around the outside, you've got various different settings that you can adjust it to. There's lots of different multimeters available. You'll have to get familiar with your own multimeter to know uh, where the settings are. But we're gonna be working on this range right here, which is the ohm range. You can see the little Amiga symbol there. And because we're going to be working with fairly low resistance values, we're gonna turn our setting to the lowest uh, resistance measuring setting, which is here at 200 ohms. You can also have 2000, uh, 20K, which is 20,000, uh, all the way up to 200 mega ohms, which is 200 million. But for our purposes today, we're just gonna look at 200 ohms. Uh, once you've found the correct setting, turn the multimeter on using that switch there, and that is now trying to measure resistance. It can't measure anything at the moment because it doesn't have any leads set up. So we always, when we're using a multimeter, we always have one lead in the common terminal. So that one will always have a common lead in it there. And then you've got to look at the other terminals to figure out which other one you're gonna use. So we've got a terminal marked 10A, that's 10 amps. We're measuring resistance, so we won't use that one. This one uh, is saying MA, which is milliamps. Again, we're not measuring uh, current, so we'll cover that up. And here we've got our voltage, resistance, and frequency terminal. So that's the terminal we're gonna use because it's got the little ohm symbol above it. So we'll put one in there. So currently the multimeter is effectively measuring uh, a huge amount of resistance, far beyond the 200 ohm maximum that it can measure. But if I pop the two leads together, you can see there that that is measuring near enough zero ohms, 0.02 uh, or 3 of an ohm. So that's not gonna affect our readings too much. So now we've got our multimeter set up. Let's have a look at the actual circuits that we're gonna be building. So first of all, let's explain just what we mean by a parallel circuit. So a parallel circuit is a circuit where current uh, doesn't have to pass through one load to get to another load. So we'll see what we mean by that. Um, let me build a parallel circuit here. So we've got an 18 ohm resistor. Now in the series circuit, we put the other uh, resistor so that the current flowing through one had to flow through the other. But if we place our 18 ohm resistor there instead and connect these two together like this, if we were to connect a power supply to these two terminals here, you can see that any current flowing into the circuit doesn't have to flow through one resistor and then the other resistor. It can simply flow through that resistor separately and through that resistor separately. So these two loads are connected in what we call parallel. So what we're trying to do on this video is figure out what is the total resistance of a parallel circuit? So we've got two 18 ohm resistors connected in parallel with each other. So what's the total resistance going to be? Now, this can be a little bit confusing when we first start because we look at this and we think, well, I've taken an 18 ohm resistor and I've added another 18 ohm resistor into the circuit. So surely we're gonna have something more than 18 ohms. And we often get lots of different uh, guesses come back when we ask students what the uh, answer to this question is. But what we can see is that if we measure the total resistance of this circuit, we get quite an interesting answer. We can see that the total resistance of this circuit is actually nine ohms. So that should be exactly nine. Again, we've got resistor tolerances, which we've spoken about in a different video, but we've got nine ohms there. 
Now, that may at first glance seem a little bit confusing. Why is it that we're getting a smaller resistance than the total of these two resistors? If you look, we're actually getting a smaller resistance than either one of those resistors. So why is that? Well, the answer to that is that when you look at this, what we've actually done is we've created an additional path for electricity to flow. So if you imagine that this was like water in a pipe, what we've done is we've introduced a new branch where water can flow through. That means more water can flow, which means that this must be providing less opposition to that flow. So therefore, the total resistance of this circuit is going to be smaller. So we can see though there is a very simple relationship between these two values. We've got two resistors that are the same value, an 18 and an 18, and the total resistance is 9 ohms. So hopefully you can see that that 9 ohm value is simply half of one of the resistor values. So this is a really uh, good exam question. You may find you get a question where you have uh, two resistors of the same value connected in parallel. What's the total resistance? You actually barely need to do a calculation. You just need to half one of the resistors. So we've got uh, two of those. So here we've got nine ohms in total. But what's going to happen now if we connect up a further 18 ohm resistor? What do you think will happen to the total resistance of the circuit? Is it going to increase? Will it decrease? Will it stay the same? Let's have a look. So if we connect another 18 ohm resistor into this circuit and then connect it up in parallel, what we'll find is that the resistance has dropped down again. And actually what we've got now is another very simple mathematical relationship between the total resistance for the circuit and the value of the resistors. So this has now dropped down to 6.4 ohms. Mathematically speaking, it should be exactly six, but we don't live in a perfect world, so it's never gonna be quite perfect, but we, we're about six ohms. And again, you can see that six is simply a third of one of the resistors. And actually, we could keep going with this. If we added a fourth resistor of the same value, we'd end up with 18 divided by four, which would give us four and a half ohms, and so on and so forth. So the resistance value is gonna keep dropping the more resistors that we add in parallel. So just to prove that this works for any value of resistors connected in parallel with each other, as long as they're the same, we've set up another circuit here. Now here we've got two 10 ohm resistors connected in parallel. Remember this is a parallel circuit. The current doesn't have to go through one resistor to get to the next one. It's free to flow to each independently. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the resistance of this circuit and see what the total resistance is going to be. So based on what we've already done, if we look at this, we've got two 10 ohm resistors connected in parallel. Immediately, you should be thinking, well, I know the total resistance is going to be smaller than either one of these. So the total resistance should be less than 10. But also, we know that we can calculate it a little bit more accurately. We can say we've got two 10 ohm resistors. The total resistance will be half of one of the resistors. So we've got 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. So if we turn the meter on now, we should find that we've got a 5 ohm total resistance here. And that's great. So once again, we're slightly over 5, but well within the tolerances of these resistors. So we're happy with that. So we can see clearly uh, two resistors of the same value connected in parallel. We end up with half of one of the resistor values. Let's again take that to the next step. We'll connect in another 10 ohm resistor. So we've got our 10 ohm resistor here that we're going to connect in. So if we put this in, we should get a specific value on the multimeter. So once again, let's just think this through before we connect it up. We've got three resistors of the same value connected in parallel with each other. So that means that the total resistance will be one third of one of the resistor values. So we've got to think what's 10 divided by three. Slightly trickier, but not a problem for you. You're going to be a genius electrician. We've got 10 divided by 3 gives us 3.3 recurring. Yeah, so 3 and a third ohms. So we should get somewhere around that on the screen. Bear in mind it might not be exactly 3.3 because of resistor tolerances. Let's see what value we get. So we've come out at 3.8. So we're within half an ohm of the correct answer, which is entirely acceptable in real world applications. So hopefully that makes some sense now. We've seen what happens as we connect more and more resistors in parallel. The value gets smaller and smaller and smaller for total resistance. And also we've got some uh, rules that we can apply to where our resistors all have the same value.